This episode was created in partnership with The Coast That Shaped the World, a project of the University of the Highlands and Islands. Hello there, and welcome to Wild for Scotland, a podcast full of inspiring stories from Scotland. I'm your host, Cathy Kamleitner. Wild for Scotland helps you connect with Scotland and dream about future adventures. I'll tell you immersive stories to whisk you away, share some of my top tips for your own Scotland trip, and introduce you to inspiring locals and their stories. So lean back and enjoy. Let's travel to Scotland. Here at Wild for Scotland, we have a soft spot for the Scottish West Coast. It has been my inspiration for many of the stories I've told on this show, from solo hiking across the Outer Hebrides, to stargazing on the Isle of Col, kayaking along the coast of Galloway, and falling asleep to the soothing sounds of waves lapping onto the beach. I've told stories of coastal paths, boat trips, and the magical world that lies below the water's surface. I love telling stories about the coast, and I think you love listening to them. That's why I wanted to introduce you to a project called The Coast That Shaped the World, or simply Coast. Coast is a gathering of stories that reflect and celebrate the people, communities, heritage, culture and the environment of the West Coast and islands of Scotland. More than 30 local story gatherers spent a good part of the pandemic to collect 1,300 stories about a variety of coastal subjects. The aim of the project was to get local communities involved in telling their own stories and to allow those of us who are interested in listening to learn about lesser-known areas, the characters who inhabit them, and the parts of history that don't always get the attention they deserve. The result is a dazzling collection of stories and legends that are deeply rooted in a sense of place. The team behind Coast took on the enormous task to categorise the collected stories and make a selection of them available to the public. There is a website where you can learn more about the project and the story gatherers, and an exhibition that tours to locations all over Scotland. But if you, like me, love listening to stories, you should definitely check out the Coast app. The app features many of the stories that were collected, some background about where they came from, and a map to help you connect the stories to their place of origin. But the part that I'm most excited about is the audio section of the app, where you can listen to recordings of stories from all over the West Coast. Today, I'd like to share five of my favourite stories from the app. I picked stories that relate to places I personally connect with, and also to show you how varied the stories on the app are. If you like what you hear, there are many, many more stories to discover. Download the Coast app for yourself. It's available on the App Store and on Google Play, and it's completely free of charge. But now, let's listen to some stories. This is The Coast That Shaped the World. We'll start with a story that reminded me of a story I was told by Sarah Hobbs, our storytelling interview guest from last week's episode. It's called A Calach, and was told by Fiona McKinnon, a resident of the Isle of Tyree. A Hayach, as told by Fiona McKinnon, resident of Tyree. There once was an old hag who lived at Barapol, and who was believed to have an understanding with the little folk who lived in the grey hillock. The understanding was that she was allowed to draw water from the magic well, a well whose water was supposed to grant immortality to all who drank it. The little folk warned the old hag that she would meet a fate worse than death should she ever leave the lid off the spring. But as the old hag grew older, she also grew forgetful, and one day she forgot to replace the lid. She walked back to her cottage unaware that the well was bubbling over. 
so that it finally formed Loch Feel. Without the magic power of the well, the old hag and the little folk perished. Loch Feel is now the main water supply and continues to have many problems. Could it be that they are getting their revenge? A mound of stones about 50 yards in front of the place known as the land in Barapul is believed to be the ruin of the old hag's cottage. If you'd like to learn more about the Isle of Tyree, scroll back to season one of Wild for Scotland and listen to episode two, Lullaby. The next story takes us to the Isle of Canna, an island we featured in a recent episode on season four. It's called the Canna Graffiti and was contributed by Fiona McKenzie, a singer and archivist at Canna House. The Canna Graffiti, contributed by Fiona McKenzie, singer and archivist. The iconic graffiti on the cliff face at the pier on Canna has long caused much discussion amongst visitors. Some find it ugly and do not understand why the residents do not clean it up. Others find it creatively intriguing and interesting, a piece of local colour. It has appeared in many films and images through the years, but most people are unaware of the significance of the vividly painted names and dates. The names are in fact names of the various fishing boats who visit Cana Harbour on a regular basis. Those returning most frequently take it upon themselves to freshen up their names, radio frequencies and skippers' names, etc., as is evidenced at times by the discarded aerosol paint cans left on the pier. There is one piece of graffiti with an intriguing story, however. In 1952, a man called Robert Wallace Mingies bought an XRAF rescue launch, which was renamed the Patrice. Whilst anchored in Canna Harbour on holiday, a couple of years later, the Mingies were awoken by John Campbell knocking on their boat asking for help, as he had just had news that his father, Duncan Campbell of Inverneal, had died. Robert took John and Margaret to Malig, leaving his wife and the children in Canna House with Sheila Lockett, John's secretary. The family continued to visit Canna almost every year after that, painting and repainting the dates on the cliff face. The name of the boat is painted on the cliffs behind the waiting room at the pier, and the Patrice still berths in the harbour whenever the family can visit. Next up, we have one of my favourite stories on the Coast app. It combines three of my favourite things, wildlife, kayaking and the Isle of Cull. It was told by a local lass. This is Inspector Pureau of Cull. Inspector Pureau of Cull A few summers ago, me and my pal took off in his Canadian canoe along the side of Loch Etharna, from the middle pier of the village of Arenagaur, past the main Kalmak pier to Elin Etharna, the tidal island. Whilst we were exploring, we shored the canoe up on the island and we came across two large bundles of white polypropylene pallet banding. As this presents a hazard to nature and sea life and is an eyesore, we decided to dispose of it safely by hauling it into the canoe and transporting it back to the village. It was really heavy and filled most of the canoe. It was easily... 2.5 2.5 times the height and nearly covered the length of the canoe. I had already attracted an audience of about 20 seals due to singing to them on the paddle out. I had attracted so many seals, but by now my canoe partner was getting slightly irritated by this because I was singing the same songs to them over and over again. I enjoy singing to the seals, especially in the water, in their environment. I was still singing as we paddled back to the village pier and we carried on picking up sporadic floating pieces of plastic. 
The seals with their inquisitive nature followed the canoe as they do, although I started to notice a number of seals dropping off. One seal caught our attention as he was dogged enough to follow our canoe. He continued to swim with us behind the canoe a small distance, about eight to ten metres away from us. He tailed us until we landed at the middle pier. I called him Inspector Puro because of his bug, bushy eyebrows, beautiful eyes and moustache. He was a very distinguished-looking seal. When we landed near the middle pier, I felt an urge to turn around. Something was calling my attention. There was Inspector Puro as we berthed with a farum feed bag in his mouth. At that point, there was no difference between man and beast. The message from the seal was friendly and helpful, as if to say, here's some more rubbish for you. We don't need this here. This is yours. This is man's. Once it had ensured we had taken notice, it left the bag for us and swam off. My pal then relaunched the canoe and retrieved the feed bag. This was truly a magical moment that will stay with us. As told by a local lass from Col. While we're at the topic of marine wetlife, I picked another fantastical story about a creature of the depths. Not all stories on the Coast app are purely based on reality, although who knows, maybe this one really happened. It's called The Granny and the Whale, and was originally told in Gaelic by Donald McFarlane in 1968. It was provided to the story gatherers of Coast by the Ross of Mull Historical Centre. Granny and the Whale It was the end of the 18th century. The boat was on its way to America, and she was full of everything that was best. When she was coming near the islands, a big whale came up by her side and put the fear of life on those on board. Despite the shouting of the crew, they couldn't make her flee. All day she followed them with a big open mouth. One man threw a three-legged stool at her, but she swallowed that. Another man threw a barrel of apples, and she swallowed that too. At last, one of the sailors thought that nothing would be useful unless the whale could get someone in her belly. Before long, an old woman that was on board was overboard, and the whale swallowed her. They disappeared, and the boat got into a safe harbour. The next day, the whale was found, stranded on the sand at Uskin, in the Ross of Mo. There was confusion yonder. Every man with a knife was cutting and skinning. But they were scarce believing their eyes when they saw the old woman inside, sitting on a stool, and she busy eating an apple. I should note that Donald McFarlane did not specify the place where the whale was stranded, but when Tom Atchison told the story at Creek Hall over 15 years ago, he said it was at Ushkin. If you'd like to listen to one of my stories about the Isle of Mull, you'll need to scroll back to the final episode of Season 2. It's called Wild Isle and takes you on a journey to a bog and the coast. Let's take a quick detour to hear a word about our sponsors. Hello, Wild for Scotland listeners. My name is Fran Tarauskis and you know me as the co-producer of Wild for Scotland. But I'm here to tell you about another podcast in the Tremula network. On the Outside is for anyone that spends their time outdoors in the UK and wants to engage in the wider outdoor community. Each episode you'll hear a diverse range of enthusiasts and experts talking about the news stories that matter to them. We look at everything from specific sports news to the social issues and events that shape the way we experience the outdoors. So if you want to hear conversations and opinions on what's happening outside, search for On The Outside in your podcast app or head to ontheoutsidepodcast.co.uk. And we're back. 
The final coast story I've got for you today is a story written from the perspective of a long-gone inhabitant of the Scottish coast. It's set on the Isle of Gia near the Kintyre Peninsula and reflects on the passing of time. It was contributed by Keith Wilson from Gia and was originally written for the Our Island Project. This is Once Upon a Geological Time in Gia. Once Upon a Geological Time in Gia. I was born 450 million years ago, but I looked different way back then. Who am I? You know me. You probably see me on your trips to the beach in the summer. You might even have draped your towel over me. Yes, I'm that big chunk of rock with the unusual patterns at Port Cool on the northwest coast of Gia. So, people on Gia are telling their stories for the Our Island Project. That's great news, because they have a lot of great stories to tell. I, too, have an interesting story to tell, so perhaps you might want to hear all about me. After all, I've been around for a very long time, and this is my island, too. Let me set the scene for my appearance. Six hundred million years ago, Earth was very different than you see it today. A giant continent and a single ocean replaced the familiar continents and oceans of today's world. The atmosphere was toxic, and no life on the land existed with only simple organisms to be found in the oceans. Yet, This is the time when my story begins. The single ancient continent of Rodinia was situated in the far southern latitudes of our planet, close to where Antarctica is today. But like all continents, both then and now, Rodinia was being rearranged and moved by the energy coming from the planet's core. The continents split apart, creating a new and vast ocean, the Yapetus Ocean. The ocean floor was piled with mud, sand and lavas, and at the ocean's edge huge rivers deposited more sediment from what was a barren and desolate landscape. Some of this ocean sediment deposited six hundred million years ago, would eventually become rock. Yes, that's where I come from. Me, and of course, many of the other rocks that you see on Gia, and it's Scotland today. In the geological time scale, nothing stays the same for long. Continents continued to jostle and converge, and the Yapetus Ocean began to close. The pressure of the continents converging was so intense that the ocean floor sediments were squashed and squeezed, as well as being physically and chemically altered by the heat and pressure. This created huge towering mountains, and deep underground new rocks, including little old me, were being formed from the sediments of the long-gone ocean. You can still see the marks on my surface, how I was squashed and squeezed all those years ago. It took millions of years to pass before I saw the light of day, but when water and wind and ice eventually eroded the huge mountains, I was exposed, and for the first time in my existence the sun shone on my surface. It was a warm sun, for what you humans now call Gia was part of a land mass which lay close to the Earth's equator. As time went by, the motion of the continents continued, and I witnessed changes. Large reptiles which you know as dinosaurs roamed the planet. Plants were growing in profusion everywhere and huge forests covered the land. 
This was the age of the creation of coal. The landmass on which I was situated continued to move north, and after millions of years the dinosaurs became extinct, and a destructive event took place right here on my doorstep. Around forty million years ago, a volcano erupted somewhere to the northwest, between what you call Isla and Mole. This resulted in thin sheets of lava, cutting vertically through weaknesses in the older rocks. Once solidified, these became known as dikes. Gia has some great examples. It was some time after this that your distant ancestors, mammals, became the dominant life form on the planet. I hope you enjoyed these stories from the Coast That Shaped the World app. If you like what you heard, head to our show notes to find the link to download the Coast app. It's completely free and available for Apple and Android phones. You could use it to learn more about places on the Scottish West Coast that you've visited in the past, or find inspiration for future trips to lesser-known locations, or simply to listen to stories about this wonderful part of the world and connect with the histories, people and myths of the West Coast through your headphones. The app is available on the App Store and on Google Play. Just head to our show notes for the links. The Coast Project was part funded by the ERDF Natural and Cultural Heritage Fund, administered by Nature Scott, and received much funding by CalMac and UHI West Highland. And with this, I send you off to dream about your own journey to the west coast of Scotland, in real life or through your headphones. There are many more stories waiting for you. Thank you to Coast for partnering with us on this episode and for letting us share some of our favourite stories with you. We're taking another wee break to work on new episodes for you. In the meantime, check out the Coast app, listen back to some of your favourite past Wild for Scotland episodes or discover some of our recommended podcasts that we think you'll enjoy. I'll share a list with you in this week's newsletter. Thank you so much for listening. Wild for Scotland is part of the Tremula Network, adventure and outdoor podcasts off the beaten path. The show is written and hosted by me, Cathy Kamleitner. Thanks to Fran Tarowski, who is the co-producer and editor, and does the sound design. And to Kirsty Spain, who helps with transcripts and social media. Podcast art is by Lizzie Vaughan Knight, the Tartan Trailburner, and all original music is composed by Bruce Wallace. Until next time, when we travel to a different place in Scotland. 